Now that we have reviewed quadratic transformations, we're going to move on to solutions. We've talked about solutions in the warm-up questions, but I haven't actually explained it completely to you. If you remember that there are other words for solutions, we have x-intercepts, we have zeros, we have roots. X-intercepts are when a parabola touches the x-axis. Zeros are whenever you plug in zero for y in the quadratic equation. If you plug in zero for y and solve for x, you're solving for the zeros. The roots, the roots are another word for the x-intercept. It's just if you have a graph, where is it touching the x-axis? Or what could you plug in for x to get zero for y? So roots are just another common word for these other three things. I hope you've noticed by now that there is a certain number of solutions to each quadratic. In order to help you come to your own conclusions about how many solutions there are, let's just say, okay, well, how many solutions are there to this one? If this was your equation, and here's the graph for that equation, how many solutions are there? If you take in a little while, remember, we've got other words for solutions. Solutions are the x-intercepts which happen whenever y is 0. So when is y 0? On the x-axis, we got negative 3, 1. How many solutions is that? 2. In this parabola, how many solutions are there? It's only touching the x-axis one time. In this parabola, how many solutions are there? What number could you plug in for x? So from left to right, what number do you plug in to get 0 for y? That's a trick, because it's not touching the x-axis. There are no x-intercepts. That means that there are 0 solutions. There's nothing you can plug in to this graph to get y equals 0. So let's label that. This is in the quadratic booklet, or you can just be copying down these notes. If the parabola is opening upwards or downwards, but it's shifted in a way that there are two solutions that you can see the two solutions, if you can see the parabola and the graph only touches it one time, then there's one solution. If you see the graph of a parabola and it's shifted up or down and it's opening away from the x-axis, then there are no solutions. There are multiple ways to get solutions for a quadratic without just graphing. I think that graphing is the easiest way to do it, but maybe if you think differently from me, you would like to look at a table. If we solve this with a table, then you're going to open up your calculator, you're going to type in the equation, you're going to open up the table part of your calculator, and then you would fill these numbers in. Go ahead and fill these numbers in for all of the graphs for each of these equations. I'm only going to be doing the first one with you. And you would see that this table wouldn't be the best one for showing the axis of symmetry or for showing the vertex of the parabola. But we can see that the numbers are repeating. And if we're solving, if we're trying to get solutions, then we're looking for when y is 0. What would you plug in for x to get y as 0? We would plug in either negative 2 to get an answer, or we could plug in 3 and we'll also get the answer of 0. So when you're filling in these tables, just write the numbers down that it asks for, and then the key point that you're looking for is this. When y is equal to 0, then that x is your solution. OK, so like you've been doing in the warm-ups, this is my favorite way to come up with solutions, and that's to look at the graph. That's because graphing is super easy if you have a calculator. Or, after you've practiced so many of these graphs, you can just picture it in your head. Then you can know how many solutions you would be expecting. The final way that you can get the solutions... Actually, this isn't the final way, but 
This is the third easiest way, but it doesn't always work out. But whenever you can factor, whenever you can factor the quadratic, if you set the factors equal to zero, like we did in the test from like two weeks ago, it was something that I hadn't shown you how to do, but if you set the factors of a quadratic equal to zero, then whenever you solve it for x, it's going to give you the solution. I'll show you that on the next slide. And we call that, the abbreviation for that word is the ZPP, but I want you to write this on your worksheet. This is the zero product property. The zero product property says if two numbers are multiplying and they multiply and give you the answer of zero, then that means either a is equal to zero, and look, a is just the first number, or b is equal to zero, which is the second number. So if you have anything 6 times 3, a times b, 0 times 4, 0 times 4 gives you the answer of zero. 6 times 3 does not equal 0. If a times b is equal to 0, and let's just use some intuition, the only number you can multiply a number by to get 0 as your answer is 0. If you have two regular numbers and they're multiplying, two regular numbers will never make 0. It's always going to equal another number. But if you have two numbers that you don't know, or maybe if you only have one number that you don't know, 4 times x equals 0. The zero product property is simply saying if two things are multiplying to be 0, then one of those things is going to be equal to 0. If you know what the other one is, you know that this is the number 4, well then, okay, that means that x must be 0. But if you don't know what either one of them is, because there's two possibilities, then what you do is you do both. You check the first one and set it equal to 0. And you check the second letter, and you set it equal to 0. OK, so let's set this first one equal to 0. If these two things, these two parentheses, are going to multiply to equal 0, then that means either the first one is equal to 0, or the second one is equal to 0. So let's just put x plus 5 equals 0. To solve this for x, all we have to do is subtract the 5. That means that x equals negative 5. And then let's just check and make sure that that works. If I put a negative 5 for x, and I added 5 to it, and I put a negative 5 on the other one, and I subtracted 4 from it, what would negative 5 plus 5 make? 0 times negative 9. How much would 0 times negative 9 be? 0. So that would be one of the solutions. To get the second solution, we take the other parentheses, x minus 4, and we put it equal to 0. If x minus 4 was equal to 0, then we would have to add the 4 to get x equals 4. And then we check it. 4 plus 5, 4 minus 4. 4 minus 4 makes 0 times 9. 9 times 0 equals 0. So it works out. You take the first parentheses, put it equal to 0, and you solve it. You take the second parentheses, you put it equal to 0, and you solve it, and you get both solutions. One solution was negative 5, and the second solution was positive 4. You should have no problem doing the second one the exact same way. So I'll just skip to number five. Do we have two things multiplying for number five? We have something outside the parentheses. We have something inside the parentheses. What happens when you have something that's touching a parentheses? It means you're going to multiply. So this thing on the outside is one of the factors, x equals 0. If we solve this, there's nothing to even move. It's already the answer, x equals 0. Then we do the second answer, which is take the other factor, 
2x plus 1 and put it equal to 0 and then solve it for x. And we get x equals negative 1 half. So our two solutions for number 5 are x equals 0, x equals negative 1 half. Take one little piece, put it equal to 0, and then you check the other little piece, and put it equal to 0. Solve for x both times. Those are your solutions. But what if it's not factored? What if it's just a regular quadratic? Then you're going to have to go one step further and factor it first and then come up with a solution. 2 times 3 makes 6, 5 on the bottom. What multiplies to make 6? 2 and 3. 2 plus 3 makes 5. These factors work. We just need to divide by a, which is 2. So this is going to be equal to 1. This one is 3 halves. x plus 1. x plus 3 halves equals 0. When you factor it, it only changes the left side, and the right side is still equal to 0. Then you take the first factor, put it equal to 0. Then you take the second factor, set it equal to 0, solve for x. and you're done. Once you get your answers, you're done. On this page, I don't remember 100%, but I'm pretty sure that all of these will have two solutions, or maybe one of the solutions will repeat. Maybe it'll have the same solution twice show up. It's possible. Just remember, I just taught you three ways to solve for the solutions, which are the same thing as the roots, which are the same thing as the x-intercepts, which are the same thing as the zeros. And there's three ways to get those, the graphing, using a table, or factoring.